It's a run. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Tori like guards the pizza till the end of the meeting. She's like, no pizza. <laughs> You Let's not do till I'm yeah. Just like, like, <laughs> you know, he, he messaged me that I could write a paper to make up for some of my absences. I'm like, yeah, me too. he said I have five, but the thing is, I know that I don't have five. I have four. I recall exactly. I missed two days. One, I was actually sick. The other was after my car wreck. And then I missed two others because I had personal things to do. But I didn't want to argue. I was like, okay, I'll write it. <laughs> just three to four pages of talking about mindfulness, so I wrote it in like an hour, but I was like, I bet a lot of other people have to do that too. Yeah, yeah so I had six, and I was like, you know what, I probably had seven, so <laughs> I'll go ahead and write it. Well, <laughs> I know I was thinking that, like, I know there's a couple other people that miss more than me, so it's probably not just me. This is oh, true. yeah. Well, at some point, we stopped writing, we stopped writing down our names, we started yeah. taking attendance from our assignments. So that might be why you should have more. Maybe you're missing one more assignment, maybe you're missing a day. Oh, um, then I should have like 12. I've had that well, maybe days. he's not doing that. <laughs> because I had, a, I had a couple of assignments that I didn't upload. Okay. Yeah, I still have to upload. It's only like 25 to 27. Yeah, right. And I would, I've had like three out of 27 that weren't uploaded. Do you want to get a one? Yes, I'll do that. So like I emailed them too to ask um, if our presentations are just like the same thing as our paper basically they would have to design a model for someone. I asked if you can design a model for yourself and he said that that was fine because I was under the impression that our presentations could be over whatever topic we wanted. Then I happened to look back to the syllabus and I was like, no, I bet it's going to be the same as my rest of paper. I'm glad I looked before I started working on mine. But, uh, the requirements for the paper is, I thought it was just like over a topic of mindfulness or one of the models or whatever, but it's designing a model for what? someone's what? life on like a micro <laughs> and a macro level. And so I asked if you could do it over yourself because I've already started doing a lot of mine over yoga and things. And so he said that it's fine if you do it over yourself. Yeah, so I sent him my topic. And he said that it sounded good and it's just about like mindfulness as a vibe. So I don't know if that fits the criteria or not. I thought it was weird one day when he asked me to talk about my topic, he acted like my topic wasn't good. 
And that's because I said I was just going to do mine over like um, mindfulness in your body, like exercise wise. But now I understand why, because he wants us to do more of like a model. So I guess yours is going to fit in the category of doing a model over your own life. So that's why he just said it's just okay. Mine was not because it wasn't about any of my concerns. Now it's going to be. It's going to be about mine. <laughs> And I'm glad I checked on that before I started doing yeah. a whole presentation over just yoga and then got like a five on the points. Over 30. Over 30. And I was proud of you. Four people, so we can wait and see if anybody else shows up. We have five. We have five. We need at least one more response. So because he gave me a 1.5 out of two on one of our very first ones because it wasn't long enough, so I'm going to have to do another one and get the two points on it so that I can actually get all the points. I'm playing games. My phone is sports, so I'm playing games. Sometimes that's why I just like. You're a doctor. What's your title to get a doctor? Which doctor you're trying to get your last name? You know where your first name is? Gary. That's right. Gary. Since there's only six, do you want to play a game with us? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Okay. So, team one. Who's going to go? What do you go by? You don't go by your first name. JT. Um, somebody on your team, like maybe the person behind you, okay, these are sporks. This is 
not a commentator. Not commentator. <laughs> well, we've been saving up a very long time, so it's not just like this month or anything. Um, I tried ping pong balls and ended up with all the ping pong balls hidden behind my stove because they just went everywhere. So I just said, let's just use corks to bounce less. So the goal is to stand behind the tape and try to get new points. This is one, this is five, this is ten. And we're just going to time it for 30 seconds. And the other team has to be very distracting. You want to get like boos and hisses, and, and your team should cheer. And the person throwing it needs to try to concentrate, even though there's a bunch of noise and ruckus going on. So I'm just curious to see if before or after meditation makes any difference. I don't know. So, but that's the game. I just made it up in my head. So, so, I want to so team one, if you want to come up, and team two, you can come closer so you can pull them. Okay, so I'm happy to throw things. I'm just kidding. 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 I'm just and then we'll total up everybody's score. How many do we'll you do our meditation? Um, how many can in 30 seconds? Oh, okay. Um, and we'll make this. So, should I go for 30 seconds? Yes. You'll go for 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. And if you want somebody to hand your cord, you can if you just want handles up on that. It's fine. Uh, it's really she teams uh, like the Cheeto uh, game. So, then how are you? Cheeto. Um, well, except nobody has a. Okay. <laughs> you guys cheer. You guys boo. Ready? Set. Go. Uh, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> you miss it. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, 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 nothing. No, boo. Miss it again. 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 Yeah, it's just the game is live. You won't do any better. Um, you want to get a key one? Try again, no. That's the end, that's the end. Time's up. Oh. Time's up. Oh. Good job. Keep on getting away. You may do in the tent. We're just one of them. Oh. Alright. Now I'm going to have to reset. There's nothing in the buckets. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm not going to do this at all. It's not easy. There was no yelling or cheering in that. So. <laughs> I don't know, in high school, at basketball games, though, we would sing Christmas carols or like strawberry okay, wine, like the yeah. yeah. song. Yep. Oh, 
shouldn't seen with people. Oh.
and then put my hands like that when I do it. It works. We're just getting ready to miss it. So if you're trying to miss it, you missed missing it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start. We're doing three five minutes.
Do you, what were your counts? Uh, 27 from the Okay. Do you have uh, total trouble concentrating or anything? Oh, yes, you have five people. I was at 55, 52, and 56. Uh, definitely had trouble concentrating. I think I've Tended to, tended to lose count a lot, actually. Just a lot on my mind. Were any of them harder than the others? Um, maybe the first one may have been the hardest, but they all, it, the difficulty didn't really seem to go down as I was hoping it would. You know? So I guess I would think, you know, as I kind of calmed myself down a little bit, it may have been easier, but it really didn't get a whole lot easier. 
we were trying everything. <laughs>
That's good. <laughs> I know that pork. <laughs> I love that pork. <laughs> I, I know it too. Like, the honey wine. Yeah, terrible. Oh yeah. Honey meat. Yeah. 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 Y
I guess, take yourself out of all that and just sit yourself on, uh, I guess, just doing your best, um, that could help you there. Um, for a kind of a model, I kind of picked out ACT. Um, one of the reasons I did that, I think that, especially in sports, it's kind of important to and maybe realize your values at first. Um, this may seem obvious, but I don't think, I mean, the values shouldn't be winning because winning isn't everything. Although, I mean, I guess certain people's values may be winning. That could be all there is for it. But let's say that it's not winning. If your maybe values are like because you enjoy playing the game, because you want to get better, because you want to improve, um, you know, even in when you lose or something doesn't turn out the way you want it, you can always, instead of being all down on yourself, you can kind of look back and say, okay, what can I learn from this? Um, how can I improve on this? Uh, I guess just overall, just kind of seeing, I guess, the value, or like searching for the values of why you're actually playing the sport that you're playing. Um, And also, they go, this is kind of tagging along with that there, um, kind of have a non-judgmental attitude toward things. Um, actually, hold on, let me start over again with that. I was mixing two points together. Um, well, I guess I'll just stop on there because I'm kind of losing my train of thought. Oh, okay. You brought up some good points. You talked about. Um, expectations, which is something that I didn't really read too much about, but that could be a part of your external uh, stimuli or internal stimuli, because like he said, you know, there's a lot of, when it comes to like college sports, there's a lot of media, there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of fans, so there's a lot of external pressure, but also if you internalize all of that that's going on, and then you set expectations for yourself either based on that or based on your own expectations, when you start setting up expectations of future events, that's when you can become frustrated that things don't come down exactly how you want. So I think that he brought up a good point about focusing on the values and playing the game for the reason, for values, not just for winning. Um, Picking back on the, the coach, the Seahawks coach, um, he, he kind of an extension, he focuses on, he encourages his players to, for self improvement. Not for the external stimuli. So, you know, like, like you say, do your best. You know, think about improving yourself. And then uh, the term, another term uses is warm body, where that extends to you know, the whole, whole team like group meditation. It extends beyond yourself, but you're actually trying to improve yourself. Does that make sense? Yeah, like trying to improve yourself. I'm just trying to be the best player I can be. I'm not trying to make sure we win this game. It's more about I'm going to be the best player I can be tonight and, and every night, and I'm improving. Yeah. Who who would like to offer any thoughts next? I haven't wrote my written my response yet, but um, I like what you said about the expectations because um, I have a personal experience with that. I was our tennis captain in high school. I started playing tennis when I was like 10. And I actually don't play now because I realized I got burned out on it because I was always, I always had expectations. Everybody was always like looking to me to win. And I wasn't even, I wasn't our number one singles player. I was our first set of doubles. And then I was our lead for that double set because I work better in a team, but um, everybody like always expected me to like be the best at everything in practice, but that wasn't why I was tennis captain. I was tennis captain because I was the best at pumping everybody up before the games and like getting everybody excited. And then like as soon as I was done with my match, I would be able to like help everyone else when the coach couldn't, but like that's why I stopped playing because everyone had expectations for me to play in college and stuff. And I, I'm like, I just want to go to school. I'm done playing sports. I'm done with people always expecting me to win and always expecting me to do better and better and better when I just played to have fun. And um, we have a big tournament every year and um, 
I remember my junior year of high school, my partner and I um, won the tournament. And then the next year, everyone like expected us to win again, and we didn't. We got knocked out the second round by a team that wasn't very good at all because we'd like psyched ourselves out. We thought last year we came into this thinking we weren't going to win, and we did. So this year we came in thinking we were going to win, and then we didn't. So um, I think a lot of sports are are a mental game. Like tennis is definitely a mental game. There are some that you know it takes brute force and being mindful to win. And then tennis, it doesn't matter how hard you hit the ball if you can't place it in the right spot or make the right decision on where to hit the ball, then you're going to lose. It doesn't matter how hard you can hit the ball back if you can't hit it into the right spot. And so um, I think that if I had known about mindfulness then, I would have been a lot better player because a lot of us didn't understand what our coach was trying to teach us. We didn't understand he was trying to teach us mindfulness. He just didn't call it that. Like he would always just say, tennis is a mental game, you know, and he would like give us pointers that now I realize are aspects of mindfulness. And so I think um, whether it's high school sports or whatever, that um, coaches should employ that because I think um, people beat themselves up a lot and um, they get in their own heads and make themselves lose even though they might be a better player. So I think that it's really important in sports. It's not just about being physically better. Mentally, you have to be stronger than the other player too or you're going to lose. I did mine for about soccer. I played soccer since I was six. And so I've been like on a lot of different teams with like a lot of different dynamics. And even like in high school, every year when people graduate and new people come in, like everything changes over. And um, my soccer coach in high school, I think he was trying to implement mindfulness as well. He just never said that. Like in practice, we would always we'd have a set of drills and it lasts for about 10 minutes. And so you were constantly doing something. You were kicking. You had like this process where you'd kick the ball back and forth, and each time you'd progressively get like a more advanced like pass, I guess, you know, depending on how you were hitting it back and forth. But you weren't allowed to talk. You just had to like read each other and kind of work together on it. And so that was like kind of his way to get us out of school and into practice. And then um, bus rides, we could do what we wanted until the last like 10 minutes before we would arrive at the field. Then he would make us like all just be quiet, I guess, and they give us the warning, the 10 minute warning, and then everyone would know like it's when you put all your your gear on and you're quiet the rest of the time, and then you just kind of go from school into your into the game. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. It really would just depend on how everyone was taking it, but he never really called it anything other than, like, all right, guys, it's quiet time. Like, right. but um, yeah, I think that it would have been really good to, like, bring meditation and mindfulness like, into soccer because it's such a team sport. I mean, you can't do everything yourself. There's 11 people like on your team all together. So 10 other people you have to work with. And it gets frustrating because not all 10 people are at the same like level. So if you're having a great game and you're making all the right plays, but no one can play off of your play, it's useless. You know, you, so you have to like be like, mindful of who and what like what people, other people can handle, I guess. And so that also like brings up team conflict, which we had a lot of trouble with. Girls, <laughs> like it was just <laughs> silly girl drama. And it probably would have been a lot more helpful if we could have figured out a way to like stop it before it went to start. Like call on each other. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting mad at each other, just yeah, I'm laughing about it, mean like you're having a terrible day. I'm sorry. Yeah. You yeah. still have to play because you have to have this many people out there. But just know that you're not getting that ball. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's just, it's just difficult to do without being mindful. I think. Yeah. 
I think we have mindful of that when we get to the complex resolution. And then I was thinking about your ephemera at quiet time. That was really good. And having said, okay, so for the next five minutes, I want you to close your eyes and focus on your breathing and just visualize the ball going into the goal. Right. Visualize passing it to your teammate. Whatever your part is on that team, visualize the moves you do. Visualize it being successful. Yeah. I mean, that would have helped a lot. It really right. would have, just because then it would have actually been like making us focus on the game, not on just getting ready for it, yeah. or you know, thinking about what happened at school or what we have to do after the game. Like, it would have given us like a focus point. Focus point. Because when you're sitting there, you're fighting, you're back on nervous. Oh yeah. Does the hair look okay? Especially the like, school thing. I think I look stupid. <laughs> my socks matching. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, you can't be thinking about anything. <laughs> that, but the game, right? And the fact that like sometimes like when we our travel games were usually big games like conference games or um, like games against much bigger schools. Um, like we would always have to go to Evansville, which is like the big city near where I live, and there's well. I think all their schools, they have at least eight high schools, and it's like all 3A, 4A, and so we have to play them, and we're 1A. <laughs> we have like no more room than like 20 people on our team, which is a really good year. <laughs> Usually you have like 40 girls on a team like that, so it was always intimidating, and I think if we would have cut out thinking that it was intimidating, No, for those in here, prior to going to meditation, I was thinking about vision, I was visualizing giving in. So I think you know, my strategy uh, does. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Plus, I think just calming ourselves. I, mean, I was a lot more calm after. I mean, I didn't really think, but I was a lot more calm mm -hmm. after the meditation than before. So I thought it might be fun to try it before and after just to see what happens. Meditation is the opposite for me. Like it makes my mind feel calm, but it makes me feel energized. But maybe it's just out of habit. Because usually when I meditate, I meditate while I'm doing yoga. So like I'll get in a certain position and I'll just stay like that. And I've recently started doing the shoulder stand while I'm meditating. And like my boyfriend will always walk in the room and just stare at me. He's like, how do you how do you just stay like that? I'm like, because when you meditate, you don't focus on you know, trying to balance or whatever, you just do it and then you just focus on yourself trying to breathe and, you know, um, keep your mind from wandering to other things so then you don't even think about it. And then after like three minutes or whatever is up and then you come back out of that position, I always feel really energized. And mindfulness does the opposite for me. It makes me feel like... I think whoever takes that yeah. something about it, the meditation will energize you. So I think that's normal. I mean, I'm more mentally calm, I guess, than what it should be. Maybe it just depends on the person, too. Yeah. Like, the way that you meditate. Because I think I meditate for energy. Because yeah. I don't meditate before I go to sleep. Because if I do, then immediately when I'm done, then I'll have, like, 100 ideas. And, like, ooh, I should go organize my closet. Ooh, I should go do this. I have all this energy. So I can't meditate before I go to bed. Because it won't put me to sleep. It'll put me in overdrive. I know I tried it last night. I was having to meditate to sleep. It must be different. I meditate, I meditate a lot to sleep because yeah, yeah. I'm really bad about waking up in the middle of the night and not being able to fall back asleep. Mm -hmm. And I found if I just start meditating and just focus on counting my breaths and envisioning my day, trying to make my leaves, then mm -hmm. I fall asleep and it's not that long. But if I just lay there and say, I wish I could fall asleep, mm -hmm. then I'll stay with for hours just tossing and turning. Mm -hmm. At least if I'm counting my breaths. I used to count actual sheep in my mind. <laughs> but then I would see them like jumping around and dancing and I'd be laughing. I'm, like, oh, I'm not falling asleep counting sheep, so counting breasts is much better. Oh, there's a bug. I thought it was like something. I thought it was a spider. spider. <laughs> it's not your sleep. It's not Jacob's sleep. Oh, it's not your eyes. It doesn't look vicious. It's oh, a little it's stink bug. It just stinks a little stink bug. Yeah. And now he's going to sleep. Oh, wow. Nice little flip. He's doing yoga. <laughs> <laughs> um. Christian, do you have any comments? I know yeah, that I was is fine. Slacker. I didn't play um, sports in high school. I don't like competition. I don't think it makes me feel really, really nervous. And I don't like being on teams. The only thing I did was marching band. So 
Well, I mean, that's kind of a sport. It's yeah. very active, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's a lot of teamwork involved. Yeah, it has to be a team. I think the main thing is, and I guess it depends on what position you're in, because you have people higher up and then people lower than you, so some people carry other people. But getting in the position and making sure your music is good, you have to play all the dynamics right, and then you have to make sure you're in the right position. Because if you're shaped so if you're like one inch off of where you're supposed to be, it throws the entire thing off, and then you can get yeah. scored well. Those videos you see on TV where the people just like hit each other and then everyone falls down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That would require a lot of mindfulness, I think. Yeah, I didn't implement it. And um, I've always been like a detail kind of person though, so it was never difficult for me. But some people are just like all over the place. And I mean, you, you have to make sure that your pitch and your volume is right while you're marching. And like sometimes you march really fast, and it's really hard to like do that because you're out of breath. So I don't know. That's the only thing I did in high school. I just didn't like being around. That sounds very challenging. I would say that that would be just as challenging as a sport. It's not. I mean, you've got the physical activity of like marching and carrying and everything, and all the clothes, and then then you strain and try to stay in the right formation and keep everything on time, and then you're reading music and you're playing. So I think that that is just as much challenge. Oh uh, yeah, I've read soccer forever, and that sounds way harder. Maybe because like I don't know, it's kick. It's a, but it's like kicking the ball, really. Like if you can kick the ball and like communicate with your teammates, you're gonna have a better chance of like scoring. But I don't have to learn to play music while I'm running and trying to kick it. Like that would just be yeah. amazing. I just think it would require a lot of mindfulness because you're you're in a position where you have to multitask, and multitasking is hard. And we're supposed to try to do one thing at a time, so you can have to do each one of those things mindfully in order to make it work together. So what's the structure for something like that um, with regard to like the person in charge? Is it very regimented? How do they keep everybody to do everything right? Um, every day is like three to four hour practice. And you just, we do like sets of, like we have movements in our pieces and we do, all right, this week we're doing this movement. And then you, you do that until it's perfect. And then it's not, you stay there. It doesn't matter how old you're there. And then at the end of the week, you do the whole thing. If there's anything wrong, we had this thing like if we did anything wrong, you had to do like 50 push ups and in your gear. So Very it was just like a lot of like motivation like, I want to go home, I don't want to do push ups. Yeah. And I got to the point where like, I was burnt out enough that I went into like this closet thing and I picked my saxophone and I slammed it up against the things that break and I have to play. So. <laughs> Yeah, be mindful so you don't break two thousand dollar instruments. But yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's just a lot of practice. Over so, and over. so the way in which the the leader band leader managed it could have been more mindful. Yeah. I mean, running it like a military operation may not be the best way <laughs> to get students on board and comfortable. I mean, I can see why they would be motivated to not want to do push-ups, but it may not. Serve the overall goal of the music sound even more than a good experience in the process. So you may go, okay, if we mess up and everyone let's just sit down for a minute, talk, play, and meditate for a little bit and talk to each other. Why why are you having your trouble? Why are you having trouble with this piece? Why are you having trouble and then go back to it? I can see that working better than yeah, you messed up, you suck, go do push ups <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> or get out. I think it just had expectations because before we even got out on the field to march, we practiced for three months memorizing music. So he was like, You should know this. You should be able to do it without any problem. So I think he just he got frustrated with me. Yeah. Keep meditation fun. <laughs> Did you have any comments about sports or team activities? I, I know exactly nothing about any sport, and I didn't really do any extracurriculars in high school. Um, what? Oh, court toss. Um, How did you feel about this game? Because I know your score went up six times. 
Do you think it was just because it was the second time you did it, or do you think the meditation helped you? Uh, I think that meditation helped because it was like we came in and then we did it, and that's like right after I woke up and my ADD medicine hadn't kicked in yet, so I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm ADD. Yeah. I, I hear the heckler. What are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> of course. And then the second time, I didn't really even hear any hecklers. I was just like, throw it in there. It's just beer pop. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Can we okay. drink the wine? Yeah. Okay. Listen to it. I made one. Drink your wine. <laughs> Ken, do you have any comments about sports? Did you play any sports? Um, before in uh, high school, I played basketball, and everyone thinks that's a kind of very easy game, but it's not. Like whenever you know, like we have like a contest, like you have to actually like you have a team, you have your partner, and you have to continue to keep it up like the number, and you cannot drop it down. So whenever you play it, if you're not really mindful, and then you forgot about the force you use your hand, like the way you hit it, you're gonna get it wrong. So, like, actually, you have to really mindful and focus on, you know, like, where is the ball that you're going to get through. So, every single time I say that, like, if you're really mindful and calm and don't think about how to beat the other team, so actually you're going to work better. But if you thinking how to win the game, so it's actually, like, increase your plus pressure. And then after that, um, you cannot really, like, play very well because all your mind is focused on winning or losing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, actually, yeah. Mind is focused on that's when you get the yips, right? What they call it, the yips, where you freeze, you choke, mm-hmm. and then you get nervous because you choked and then you mess up more. I yeah. admit, I'm not a sports person um, either, but um, I just recently took up playing mandolin and then taking lessons just because I thought that would be kind of cute. Um, I've always yeah. wanted to because it's small. I tried the guitar before and it looked big, so it's a little bit more challenging, but I found that when I'm at home and I'm practicing, um, it sounds pretty good. I'm like, hey, I got this. I'm trying to learn how to read music and play, so it's really hard for me. Um, I don't breathe while I play, so that's that would be a problem when I do longer songs. <laughs> I'm trying to work on that, um, be mindful of my breath while I'm playing. Um, but I know when I get in the room with my instructor, uh, my hand instantly just starts sweating. And I'm not thinking about how to play the song or what the notes mean or breathing. I'm thinking about, oh my gosh, I want to mess this up in front of them. And then I do. And then my hands get extra sweaty, and then I keep messing up, and then I just totally stop. And I'm like, I swear, it's so much better. And then he's like, it's okay, everybody does this. Eventually, you won't do this, but everyone does it. But it's be- and I guess it's like the yips, right? I'm just totally choking because I'm in front of somebody, and I have expectations on myself to play it as good as I did at home, rather than just go and play it like I do at home. So I get all tore up about it. And then the more tore up about it I get, the more I mess it up until I can finally just calm down. So I've been working on actually trying to breathe and play. So that's really important. I do that when I go huh? If my dad or my boyfriend's with me, like I, I shake so bad when I'm about to shoot a deal with my bow, but then if I'm by myself, it'll be the perfect, most beautiful shot. And I can <laughs> I can just stand there and hold it and hold it and hold it and hold it. But if they're there, like I I shake and I feel like I can't draw back and hold it, and so I'm always like, watch. And they sit there like this, and I'm like, oh, watch me shoot this one, I'll miss, so then they don't watch, but it's really funny, because I'm like, I know I can shoot well, I just, if someone watches you, same with like, when I played sports, if somebody new came to watch me play one of my matches, I got so nervous, and even though I've done it forever, it's just because someone's watching you, you feel like you have to do better or something, I don't know. I guess when we're in the situation, we should focus on being mindful and not um, freaking out over what we expect to happen. Just go with what we know, be in the moment, and then we'd be okay. One thing I failed to do was to get the list of things we're going to work on for next week. Um, I don't have Wi Fi set up for the school on my computer. Do you guys have a set up for us? Can anybody pull up on course and tell us what our next topic is? My Information. Yes. Oh, I guess I have it in the principal. And that's our last paper, except for our final paper. Describe how you use your electronic gadgets mindfully, meaningfully, compassionately, and wisely. I don't. <laughs> they make me very mindless. 
and I try not to get on the internet or use electronics anymore. <laughs> so I'm just going to write about that. So it's the same topic for everyone. It's not changing. Yeah, much. it just does. Okay. How to describe how you use your electronic gadgets mindfully, meaningfully, compassionately, and wisely. And then he has uh, on the syllabus of uh, May 29, 12, 8 is that they were supposed to upload our final research paper. That's on Monday, right? Yeah. Now, what's the last day of school? Uh, I mean, this week is last week, and then yeah. next week's final as well. So the 8th is the day we do our presentation. So the yeah. oh, okay. it's 11, 12. Yeah. So we do a presentation before the final day. Well, you're only doing a presentation if you sign up with him to do a presentation. If you talk to everything, you oh, said, yeah, I'm going to do a presentation, not a paper, then you're doing a presentation. It's either or. You're either doing a presentation or a paper. But he only, had, he only had a few slots. Right. For a I'm doing a presentation. I think you said you are. I'm um, guessing that too. Okay. So whoever signed up to do a presentation is doing one. Everyone else is uploading a paper. As far as I know. Everybody's doing a paper. Um, I don't know what time we're supposed to have our papers turned in, so I thought about asking for that. Yeah. 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 And then I'm wondering if we come, if he's gonna have us come back on Wednesday at all, or if it'll Monday would be our last day. Yeah, we should ask because if he's gonna have us come back Wednesday, I'll message him and get on Wednesday. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna have us come back Wednesday. Maybe we could all like bring things in to eat or something and just have one last day. But I don't know because I know I have another final on Wednesday. I don't know if other people are going to be too busy to want to come. What can I do? Oh, it's good to spend. <laughs> oh, my teacher's like, yeah, we'll just do it all my day. Hey! And it's a presentation. All of them are presentations, so I'm just going to talk all day. I have a presentation tomorrow. That's amazing. That's all I have. I mean, I guess I'm ending five minutes early.